Good evening. You're watching the Urban Debate uh, on Mirror Now. I'm Fede Souza. Thank you for joining us. This is what I call roadblock programming. There's a lot of uh, you know news and discussion happening across the country right now that people are going to be talking about on other channels. But we're taking a break of one hour. We're dedicating one hour of prime time programming on national television to talk about mental health. Because I believe that it's a silent epidemic at this point. And the more we talk about it, the closer we are to finding the problem and solving the problem in each of our homes. If someone in your house is sick of any kind, malaria, dengue, for example, we're all familiar with what that feels like. How scary would it be if we didn't know what those symptoms were and we couldn't see the symptoms? We couldn't tell if our loved one was ill and was getting worse with every passing day. Mental health is like that. If we're not reading enough about it and we're not talking enough about it, it's very likely that we have a loved one in our homes, in our social circles, in our offices, someone you care deeply about, who's currently ill, but you cannot tell because you don't know what the symptoms look like. Today we're going to put together a panel that will talk about their own experiences, what their experiences have been, and how we can be helpful in finding these problems, solving these problems, or simply being supportive. It's World Mental Health Day. And on Mirror Now, the next one hour belongs to you. Pick up the phone and call us about any question you may have about anything at all. And we'll try and answer as many of these questions as possible. I want to thank my panelists for being kind enough for giving us that time today. And I'll do a quick round of introduction. Daniel Fernandez, stand-up comedian. Thanmay Bhatt is an entrepreneur. Uh, one of the founding members of uh, AIB or All India Bakchud, who's been so popular, so kind to come and give us his time. Dr. Harish Sethi. Shetty is a senior psychiatrist. Mrs. Neer Chabirla, the founder and chairperson of Empower, which is an organization that specifically works with mental health. Kind enough to give us her time as well. Dr. Sapna Bangar is the head psychiatrist, child and adolescent psychiatrist. We also have uh, Dr. Samir Dalvai, national chairperson of the Indian Academy for Pediatrics. And uh, Darish Said, who is a radio jockey, who joins us from Bangalore. All of these popular voices will help us make this conversation popular. And I think that's important. Uh, I, I'm going to do one quick round of opening statements from everybody so everybody can share some stories. Tanmay, I'm going to start with you. Uh, I sent you a message this morning saying, if we spent an hour talking about mental health on television, would you join us? And your answer was, of course, yes. So obviously, you believe this is something we should talk about. Yes. Um, in my, my job. Uh, it's, a, it's one of the best parts about my job is I get to speak to a lot of young people on a regular basis. And I think um, what that means is that I get to be on the receiving end of a lot of distressed messages from, from a lot of fans, from a lot of people who are like, I'm going through X and I'm going through Y. Um, so I, I know for a fact that young people in India, there's, they, they feel things, but they just don't know what to do. And there are multiple barriers to it. We'll get through it on the show. Um, but there, a lot of them go like, my parents won't understand. So I literally sit down and I record messages for parents sometimes, making them realize that if your child needs to go and see a therapist, that doesn't mean they're crazy. Yeah. Uh, just like you said, uh, I think people need to treat mental health like like the way they treat physical health. I think going to therapy is like a workout for your brain and your, and your mm -hmm. mind, uh, just the way you work out uh, physically. So, uh, you know, uh, obviously you, ca you can't give us names, but and you said people, fans get in touch with you, people write to you on social media, which means that they're reaching out for someone to hear them. Yes. Complete strangers in some they, cases. They just want someone to go like, I hear you. And I just want you to know that. What, what are the nature of these messages? What, what? Um, a lot of them are exam stuff. Hmm. A lot of it is just pressure. Um, some of it is, I don't know what to do in life. You know, I feel like young India is, is a little clueless about, you know, as, as you are at, at that age. Some of it is like love and break up and that sort of stuff. And some of it is I'm just depressed or I just feel sad all the time and I don't know what to do. And I, I happen to be very public about the fact that I started going to therapy, which almost makes everybody go like, 
you have the answers and sometimes mm-hmm. i don't so i and have somehow a, you might have learned something in therapy that yeah. you can pass on to other people yeah and there's some stuff that i can say but i have a i have a staple message uh, which i reply to people it has numbers and it has websites and it has okay. it has all of it just go like here here's some information call someone here's some people you can call uh, so much so i have bangalore there are these therapists delhi there are these therapists um and your advice is always go see a therapist go see a therapist um and don't go to a therapist as a problem solution thing that hey i went through x and now i need to get better uh go to ther- go to therapy as a lifestyle choice i think mm-hmm. you got to go consistently over like you would go to a family doctor like you would would go to a family doctor <coughs> so the goal of therapies the goal of a therapist is to make sure that at some point uh, he or she says now you don't need to come to me as often you know yeah. i've been to therapy for like a year now and i finally reached that point where my therapist said you don't need to come in every week you can come in once once a month twice a month then we high fight it was like a moment where it's like reaching a target goal weight you know almost right. like that uh it's an interesting process i'd recommend everybody to go to one daniel yeah i have some, so, so, so here's my question right yeah. we um, and, and um, i'm not going to publicly announce how old i am but we did the exams we figured out what we wanted to do with our lives it didn't seem like as much pressure as the young people in their 20s are in today yeah Do you think things have changed or, or have we moved as a society are we having first world problem what's what's different I think the thing that's changed <coughs> the most today is uh, hyper connectivity so back okay. in the day when we were in college you know our social circle was very limited to the people we knew in college and in our building societies but now you're connected to the world around you everyone's trying to look their best <coughs> on any you know platform and everyone's just portraying this lifestyle that may or may not be real you know right. so you have got kids who are in schools and colleges right now are not only just dealing with uh, their everyday pressures but now they are dealing with this pressure to live a certain kind of life which not everybody can have so that's changed a lot expectations have changed a lot people the parents want way more than they uh, did you know 20 years ago and you just find yourself now in a situation where people have more questions and no answers so i i and i face a similar situation like that you get a lot of people writing in you know i'm uh, depressed i'm suicidal i want to run away from home can you send me money i'm feeling i am having anxiety i'm having anxiety anxiety the word has become so common commonly now used, amongst yeah. yeah commonly used word but and i think he's right you know let me let me bring in uh, uh, dr shetty dr shetty it's not just depression depression has sort of become the the most commonly used word but there's anxiety there's panic there's there is depression there are various forms of various you know types of mental health problems that we need to deal with and we're not talking enough about it are we dr shet uh, yeah i think uh, the 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 anxiety is the mother of all psychiatric illnesses uh, if you deal with that early then you are saved an anxiety would mean that i'm scared that I'll, my job will be uh, my job will not last for too long i'm scared that i might not get admission to the right college i'm scared that i might not do well in my exams i'm scared that i'll not get an increment i'm scared that my emis will not go as it should and that that fear uncertainty of the future is is looming large across the country both in in the cities as well as in the rural places people have forgotten to laugh when they travel people have forgotten to smile uh, when they speak to anybody people walk like uh, robots so what is very important is anxiety is is the mother of all uh, and mental illness and it's an entry point or uh, if you do not manage it then the chances are that you would suffer from a mental illness and uh, what is very important is to nip it in the bud so the day to day activities of a person even if he is very busy 12 hours 14 hours or 15 hours a day he or she should understand that little exercise little meditation and a lot of laughter might might help people maintain their health and if you go down and if you go down it's important to pick up uh, the people early and 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 really uh, and really go for help but what i see in my workshops when i conduct for adults as well as children people are willing to answer questions in fact when i conduct my workshop for teachers i mean they uh, they would be 35 plus and you ask them a bunch of teachers say, say for example there are 150 teachers in the workshop ask them have you ever attempted suicide people are willing to put their hands up and share their stories so people are willing to talk about mental health but we are not asking the right questions there are very few people right. to ask 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 the right questions and the disconnection across the country because of globalization rapid pace of life uh, failing institutions 
has, has really been one of the most important causes for increased mental health issues and for increased uh, morbidity and death because of mental health issues. Let me, let me bring in Neerja Birla right now. Neerja Birla is the founder and the chairperson of an organization called Empower Movement. Uh, Neerja Birla, you've picked mental health. Tell us why. Tell us why you decided to put your power, your might, your considerable resources behind this problem. And what kind of work is Empower doing? Um, yeah, hi, hi, Faze. So uh, at Empower, actually, we are uh, trying to create awareness about mental health, mental disorders, and uh, trying to really destigmatize this whole topic of mental health. The stigma is so great that uh, one is not willing to even acknowledge the fact that one may be suffering from a mental illness, uh, let alone approach the doctor. So we're trying to uh, encourage conversation, encourage dialogue around mental health and its awareness so that we can empower people to acknowledge it, stay away from denial and actually seek help. Also trying to create an environment of compassion and empathy towards people who may be suffering from the same. The idea is that uh, you know, we, we're trying to spread the message that it's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay not to seek help. And by trying to normalize it and trying to destigmatize it, we do believe that we're just going to encourage people to go out there and seek help as and when they require it. All right, so go out and seek help. And, um, you know, we're getting a couple of messages. Uh, somebody said Deepika Padukone was one of the first people to openly talk about it. And when celebrities come out and talk about uh, their problems, it sort of emboldens other people to do so as well. Uh, Danish Seth joins us right now, very popular uh, radio jockey from right. Bangalore, who also has a movie coming out uh, soon. Danish, any personal experiences uh, you want to share with, with our audience? Yeah, uh, so thanks, uh, actually, Faye. Actually, and, uh, you know, uh, about six okay. years ago, uh, I... Go on, Danish, go on. Yeah. Uh, about uh, six years ago, sorry, yeah. So about six years ago, I actually uh, went through a pretty uh, bad phase. I think it was the worst phase of my life. Uh, I battled depression myself, and uh, I think it was e easily the lowest point of my life. But I think awareness to a problem is uh, half the solution to a problem. And uh, uh, you know, e even six, seven years ago, I think convincing. Uh, my family and uh, you know getting them to believe that listen there is something wrong with me because just day-to-day -day mundane activities like you know picking my phone up and saying hello to someone or coming back from work and taking my shoes off uh, that would feel like a really really herculean task uh, but yeah I think uh, fortunately for me my mum was very understanding and uh, uh, you know she was not in town so I had to go see a doctor uh, so my first step was to, uh, you know, obviously get aware and then, you know, go out and reach for help. So I uh, remember calling one of those uh, mobile phone services. They give you the numbers. I went to see a doctor, uh, got a slip at a hospital. They said room number 13. I went into that room. Uh, there was a man sitting with a stethoscope. So I just went out there and I never knew what a you know, psychologist or a psychiatrist looks like. So I started blurting all my problems out. He heard me for about, you know, 45 minutes. Uh, then put his hand on my shoulder and said, son, I wish I could help you, but I'm the orthopedician. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it just put a smile on my face. But nonetheless, I think speaking to someone really gave me the courage. And uh, then uh, from there, he sent me to another doctor. I went there, I took a few tablets. Um, initially, to tell my friends, it was a little hard that I was going through something like that. Because, you know, if you actually see, just as a society, we're so used to saying things like, uh, you know, uh, bro, tu to pagal hai. You uh, should mental hospital. Mein hona uh, you know, is, you know, is whatever you know, is sick in his mind, uh, sick in his head. Uh, so I think these are words that we don't even realize when we use them. Like we'll just say, "Bro, that's retarded, bro." But we, you know, we're not sensitive to these words. Uh, but I think after I went through my experience personally, for me, it got a lot more uh, sensitive. And uh, it's been about six years now. I'm fine. Danish, what about all, all the people you gave anxiety to when you prank called them, Danish, help. for the last uh, five years? <laughs> all the people you prank called. See, uh, you know, I don't drop them into depression, but you see, the good thing out of it is uh, obviously not like Tanmay, but I have about a few million plays on SoundCloud, which means that many million people have laughed as well.
<laughs> humble brag. God. I, I'm just following uh, AIP's trend. <laughs> and, and then of course Danny as well. I'm a huge fan of Danny as well. I just follow whatever they do. I try and add to the laughter as well. Well, as long as we are making people laugh, but it, it, it's interesting. I want to bring in uh, Dr. Dalvai. Dr. Dalvai is, is a pediatrician. Dr. Dalvai, I love the fact that Danish shared that he went to an orthopedician <laughs> first. By mistake, but not the pedician. Maybe before, while we might be looking for the right kind of doctor, and that's normally difficult to do, any doctor, just walk up to anybody and tell them that you're having a problem so they can hear you out and then point you in the right direction. So go to your family physician, go to your, uh, you know, your orthopedician or, uh, you know, whoever else. Everyone except for Dr. Vijay Malia is okay. <laughs> it's the only doctor that cannot help you. <laughs> Dr. Dalvai, Depends ahead. on what you're looking for. <laughs> so so I'd just like to get back to what Danish said. He's a lucky guy. If you manage to find an orthopedician, who could listen to you calmly for 45 minutes, you've hit the <laughs> zone, man. <laughs> Coming back to what you said, just a couple of things. Uh, the gentleman Sir, earlier I think I had, that said as well. I, I think at that point, I think I had a cast around my brain at that point. <laughs> so that must have helped. But somebody said like that you are hyper-connected. And that's yeah, true, you have 5,000 friends on Facebook. The mind was, mind did have a fracture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Dr. Dalvai, So, somebody ahead. said about hyper-connected, you have 5,000 books on face, uh, friends on Facebook, but you may not have a single person to call up or somebody would come over to just share a coffee with you when you're down. I think that's the real tragedy of what's happening today. The other thing is, I'm glad there's so much of awareness, but somehow these words, depression and anxiety, have also got a little fashionable. Mm. And what we really need to look at and work at is like Tanmay said, it's like a daily mental gym. You need to understand how to keep yourself going every day. Dr. Shetty said that as well. And it's not that if I'm not happy, am I depressed? Not really. And we need to understand the normality of things. Nobody can be happy and on top of the world every moment. And this is a shift that has occurred. Everybody wants to think that he has to be super happy every minute. And if he's a little disappointed, then am I heading for depression? And that's probably also because we are used to, a lot of us, unfortunately, are used to getting everything we want from our childhood. And being a pediatrician, I'd obviously like to address this to the parents. It's not just okay, but it's very necessary to use the no word to your children many times. Because often children grow up without ever having heard the word no or without any disappointment at all. And when something happens where you're not super happy, you tend to feel very depressed or you need to, you start worrying about it. So I think we need to also popularize or talk about what keeps you going through every day. And these are the small anxieties Dr. Shetty spoke about. It's eventually having a situation where you may not have the resources to meet that situation. That's what brings in anxiety. But that's what life is all about. It's all about trying. It's all about doing your best. I think this kind of uh, philosophy is missing from the world today. And Dr. Dr. Dalvai, the how often, how often uh, do you come across children with mental health problems? Because there is, there is a tendency to believe ki, bacha hai, khilega, kudega, ho <coughs> that you know, they, it's not that serious. How important is it for parents to be on the lookout for telltale signs? You're asking me or something? Yes, yes, I am asking. No, you, you know, it's, rather than the telltale signs, I'm sure we'll talk about it. It's about how you deal with your child every day of your life. I mean, are you cribbing all the time? If you're cribbing all the time, what else do you expect your child to do? So it's also about creating the attitude in your child that, gosh, life is not all a bed of roses. You're right. bound to get some stuff. I mean, I have parents who come and tell me that my child fought with some other kids in the school or other kids kind of, you know, said something to him. So I want to go and complain about them. I what the heck? Tell your, teach your kid how to deal with it, go on with it. These are normal things in life. I mean, how many of us ha don't get disappointment on a daily basis? I mean, right. all of us do. I, I, teach I, your I, children I, to deal with it, accept it and move on with it. Dr. Shetty? I, I think that uh, so, one needs to accept that the age of onset of depression has gone down. Mm -hmm. I have a 10-year-old girl who's admitted with me, who's wanting to die, touching the fan to kill herself, wanting to run on the road so that the, the car can, can hit her. I have a 14-year-old boy who's admitted now, who has who run away from a hostel, wants to die. So the age of onset of depression has gone down. The age of the first sexual intercourse has gone down. The age of the first intake of alcohol has gone down. The age of the first suicidal attempt has gone down. And the age of sexual violence or physical violence by children against other children have gone down. There's something happening there. The earth is rotating at the same speed as it did a thousand 
thousands of years ago the the man the man is is running around the man is running around we need we are trying to live 100 years in 10 years it's easy to say that uh, the parents should understand but it's a complex process a security guard or a ceo is working for 14 to 16 hours a day Kids don't see their, their parents at home. There's no joint families. There's small families. There are, there's, a, there's a large group of marginalized population in the slums. In globalization, we also have a large number of poor people. So the mental health problem is very, very real. And whenever there is a child who's in stress, assume that the child is in depression, screen the child and see that help goes uh, into How do you screen depression. a child? Yeah, very important. If the child has a has headache which is unexplained, if the child has stomachache which is unexplained, if the child refuses to attend school, if the child clings to the teacher or the mother excessively, then before I still remember this child who was brought to me by the teacher, she said, no, this child has become very good. He was a rowdy in the class, but now he's clinging to me excessively. I said, excessive clinging, sudden, which lasts for a few days, can be a sign of emotional stress or depression. Please look at him. The child who dreams, shouts at night, runs away in sleep, the child wants to run away from home, child who says that I don't like studies, I don't like to play with my friends, child who says that I hate school, these are the simple signs which you right. can see uh, when a child is depressed. The Let age me, of onset of depression in children has gone, gone down. And Dr. Dr. Sapna Bagar, tell us this, uh, how do we tell, now? Uh, Dr. Shetty was kind enough to give us telltale signs for children, but for adults around the house, how do we know if someone is suffering and is suffering silently? If you, if you see a change in their personality, if they are kind of finding it really difficult to get up in the morning, any change in sleep patterns, either sleeping too much or sleeping too less, there is a change in appetite, so either they're losing weight or even overeating is part of kind of to look at if there is a change, that, if there is a set of changes that are happening together. Uh, people are not enjoying uh, what they used to enjoy before. They're socially isolating themselves, so wouldn't want to go out, say, for a party or wouldn't uh, like to stay in their room, wouldn't like to go out and see anyone. Uh, withdrawing from their families. Academic performance is very important. So if they were doing really well and getting like 80, 90 percent, and then suddenly those children start going to 50, 60 percent. So all those signs, when they put together, if there is any change in the behavior of a child or an adult and they start kind of affecting their day-to-day -day life, that is when they That's have when to look at That may you wanted to say something. I actually, Faye, since, uh, since you are currently, you speak to a lot of young people and me and Daniel do too. There's one or two FAQs that we, that we keep hearing. I'd like to ask all the experts on the panel and cut this up, put this on Facebook, yes. promote it a lot, all right? Uh, all the experts I'd like to ask. So one of the common things that we, that we face uh, is young people saying, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling X, I don't know who to turn who to. to. When, I, when I speak to my parents, they, um, they aren't open to me going to a therapist or a psychiatrist. Uh, what can I do? Who can I speak to? And what are the measures that I can take? Uh, I'd like to throw this open to everyone. Uh, you know, I, I want to take this, and I, and I know that uh, Nirja Bidla has been working on something like this because they're trying to put um, spaces in schools that children can approach. They're trying to train teachers, they're trying to train teachers in schools and colleges. So it's not about getting your parents to agree. You can actually approach somebody in the school directly. Uh, Nija, how much success have you had? And do you think that makes sense to train teachers to be able to A, tell the telltale signs so that children don't have to go via their parents in order to seek help? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Actually, we've uh, come up with a very nice school assisted program which offers workshops uh, to parents, teachers, and the students independently, uh, you know, so that we kind of uh, tell them what really is mental health, what are the red flags, uh, what are you supposed to do with the first signs when you see yourself, uh, you know, going through like all the symptoms that Dr. Harish and Dr. Sapna have just mentioned. And I think it's a great way to actually reach out to the schools because school is a great avenue. I mean, most of the kids are spending a lot of time uh, in school, so uh, it's a great way to actually reach out to the schools and to reach out to the students actually by, by the schools. So we have this SAP program, but uh, you know the unfortunate part is that I think it is an invisible epidemic and it's, it's out there, but unfortunately I think the schools are all talking about it, but nobody really is uh, taking any action towards it. We all say that you know the, there is, the problem is huge, but when, like, when we approach schools, mm -hmm. when we offered them even free workshops, uh, the, the response was really dismal. I mean, it was really sad to see that there was just a very few handful 
who even agreed to take the free workshop, let alone the school assisted program that uh, we've put together for them. So, Dr. Shetty, what happens if the school doesn't have a program? I think, I then think there, there are two go? things also which I would like to add. Uh, excessive fatigue without any physical cause is a sign of depression. Vague aches and pains are also a sign of depression. Now, uh, we work with schools also for a very long time. Uh, a school uh, it works ad hoc most of the times. And, and if there's an event in the school, that's an opportunity to enter the school and, and, and see that things happen. But some schools are very wonderful, empowered principals. And, 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 and if, if you really ask them for half an hour of free, of free, uh, free workshop, then that's a soup we offer. And when they love the soup, they ask for the full meal. I see schools uh, hungry for mental health workshops. And schools across board, B the BMC schools, the vernacular schools, the... the the, the elite schools and, and the other schools. Many schools who have their own counselling centres, they conduct these workshops with teachers. But I agree with the madam that it's so difficult to uncover an old software and uh, rewire a new software. The one sentence which we hear from teachers is that nothing is wrong with the child. Children don't cry as much as adults when they're upset and depressed. They might laugh and play and still they might have a, a conflict on sexual abuse, after sexual abuse or after being spanked by parents, etc. So what is very important is we need to have creative pursuits with schools and Indian revolutions are always very slow, unlike the French mm. guillotine. And so we need to really persevere, persevere and continue persevering. What we are trying to promote in schools also is the concept of the mental health soldier. The mental health soldier is one who will identify somebody who is in distress, who will spread the message of emotional resilience, emotional uh, empowerment, emotional uh, wealth, and also also see that they access help help very easily. Parents are also very resistant to uh, seeking help. I agree with Madam again that parents also, the PTA groups, etc., need to be made aware. But it's a Herculean task and we need a lot of professionals. We need a lot of NGOs like Empower. One important part which we are trying to promote is the big joint family. Schools can't live on their own accolades with their own resources. They need to partner with other schools, the community schooling. A, a, a school principal who leaves her office and walks across for a cup of coffee without invitation to the other school will build the concept of schools sharing the resources with each, each other. So a lot of creative interventions across is important. Every human being needs to be a mental soldier to take care of himself or herself and also to seek help from others. And what uh, Tanmay asked, if somebody is feeling upset, he or she should first talk to his closest favorite relative or his closest favorite teacher or a friend. And these three people need to understand to differentiate between the sprain of the mind and fracture of the mind. Sprain of the mind would mean that it's mild, it's simple, it's not very complicated, love, affection, break, humor, exercise, yoga can help. But if it's fracture of the mind, that, that means that the illness is a little more severe, then I, I'm, sh I'm sure that, I'm sure, uh, that uh, the person needs to identify that and see that they, 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 they so, refer so them to So for all of the favorite uh, relatives or teachers who are listening right now, how do we tell the difference between I a sprain a and question, a fracture? I uh, have a question. I have a Right. Dr. Shetty, quickly yeah, answer yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah, I, think think I, have have I don't want to lose that train of thought. Yes. Sprain or a fracture? Sprain would mean I'm upset that I failed in the exams, but I still manage to go and complete my routine. I do my assignments. I'm in school. I'm, I'm crying. I'm a little tense, but I'm able to manage my situation by, by going to work, going to school and going to college, and I don't have thoughts about death and dying. I, I'm not very slow. I can, I, can, I can get up in the morning. I have no issues of sleep, oversleeping or sleeping mm -hmm. less. And I, have, I do not feel very hopeless and worthless. And I'm OK when I'm with mm. friends. I'm OK when people support me. I'm OK when I can share everything with my family. And I don't have a family history of depression. I don't have people in my yes. family who have had depression or who have attempted suicide or committed suicide. So there's a thin line uh, which, 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 which we can train the teachers the, the family members and anybody to become a mental health soldier. Yeah. All right. Can I um, just come in? Yes, I, I have a couple of people who've been holding on the phone for a while. I, I mean, just want to go to that call, Danish. I'll come wait, to you immediately I, after wait, this. I have a question. Just, just give me one second. Just give me one second. Sharanya Arun yeah. has been on the phone line for a while. Sharanya, thank you for calling us. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. I'm Sharanya from Bangalore. I just want to tell, I, it's like I'm always worrying. Like, uh, I, I have so many negative thoughts. If something happens, I'm not taking it in positive way. So it's like if I hear about an accident or something happens, I'm, I'm comparing it to my life. If it happens to me, if it happens to my family, what will happen? Who will take care of, uh, who will take care of them? So it's like I'm always living in depression. I'm not living my life. 
instead i was i'm always living with a depression even in nights i was thinking about those accidents and i'm not sleeping instead i was crying for whole night not only one day two three days so this happens to me often so i i feel like i'm i'm living my entire life in this depression i'm always worried i'm always scared right. i'm always right. thinking something Doc- happens to me dr sapna yeah i'm thinking this is a classic case where uh, you've had a kind of problem about anxiety and feeling depressed for a long time and it's great that you've come forward because this this just shows that you need to go for counseling and uh, seek early help and this because it's like affecting from what you've described it looks like it's affecting your sleep it's almost affecting your day to day work so it's quite uh important that you do seek help from a trained therapist and uh, go and seek uh, either a psychologist or a psychiatrist for help right uh, what we are also going to do is my team will call you back sharanya and they'll give you phone numbers that you can use in bangalore to get in touch with people who can help you out sandeep on the phone line from surat sandeep go ahead yeah madam thanks for giving me this opportunity i would just like to say that i am a depression patient in last i was a depression person in last 12 years and uh, every we have a problem in our society that everybody thinks depression is not a disease they think it is uh, something created by ourselves but i would like to say it is a disease and we have to treat it very nicely we should go to the best doctors i last went to nimans and i am thankful to the doctors there that they treated me very nicely and they give me very good meditation counseling and everything and i'm i'm fine today and uh, at last i would say it is uh, very good if you go to some spiritual things listen to good uh, lecturers of spiritual things and of our life so that we can learn more and we can get out of this depression congratulations Thank yes you, and and it stories like this when people call and say i'm really happy that i got help i feel a lot better i'm empowered now Uh, it will encourage more people to go forward and get help uh, danish i interrupted you i apologize go ahead you wanted to say something no no i actually have a question uh, to our experts again uh, there are so many online counselors uh, that uh, you know we find online uh, how effective is online uh, counseling and uh, do you recommend it actually corporates uh, have a tie up with the online uh, portals and some of the online portals are very responsible they have trained yes, professionals yeah. and they also can differentiate uh, between sprain and the fracture of the mind and they also recommend you to go to a uh, live uh, go live uh, with the therapist or 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 go to a psychiatrist uh, some of them uh, with trained personnel uh, they are very good but there is a lot of quacks around and a lot of portals so we mm. need to be careful to find out what is the qualification of the person what mm. exactly is the is the objective of the entire counseling so if you can afford a live counseling that's much better but online counseling with a panel of psychologists in your in your corporate better. or okay. or or elsewhere i think it's it's a good combination right uh, dr dalwai go yeah. ahead so i just like to respond to a couple of things about the school okay. health and i agree with my colleagues who said that in, in children it's not like adults there you'd find somebody withdrawn and crying and dip, you know looking depressed children often are more uh, hyperactive and you'd find a child running around like dr shetty said some time back so that itself now looking at school health when we are looking at identifying a high risk population children who have special needs are <coughs> always and always a much higher risk population to end up with depression so you have a child with learning disability who's not been diagnosed and he's been recurrently being pulled up for his academics and being insulted all the time he's likely to end up with anxiety and depression which starts off with before exams but then continues always but the child who has the maximum chances of being depressed is a child with hyperactivity who gets whacked everywhere right from school to home and gets pulled up by the teachers is often punished is often thrown out of the class this is a child with classical hyperactivity impulsivity inattention and he is the guy who's you know kind of picked up picked on upon by the other children by the teachers as a naughty boy the hyperactive boy the mischievous guy and he has to keep the up that front but inside he is going more and more depressed because he is always being picked up about it and he will not show that because that's the persona that he has developed so even if we pick up these children who have some problems with academics who have some problems with behavior who have disruptive behaviors these are the children if we don't if we can't look at everybody at least make sure you look at these children i work as a developmental pediatrician almost all the older children that i see with 
ADHD, almost all of them have some amount of hyper, have some amount of anxiety and depression. And I think we should look at that. Dr. Shetty? Uh, two imp I think I completely agree with Samir, uh, what he just shared, but two important points about schools is the teachers and the parents come from the same universe and we did some work with the parents during the open house. We are screening parents for depression, we are screening teachers for depression and we find that the inc incidence is very high. A depressed mother will humiliate his child and fight with the teacher. A depressed teacher will humiliate the child uh, at home and also will, will, will really trouble the principal. So understanding adult depression in schools is very important and I always tell school principals, a school principal which, who manages the stress of the, of the, of the teachers, uh, they can really get the best out of the teachers. And some schools in Bombay have a swimming pool for teachers, they have a DJ uh, floor for teachers and there have been creative, uh, creative innovations <laughs> in, in certain schools in Bombay to de-stress uh, teachers and that I think is a very useful concept to improve the health of children in schools. Thank you Samir for that beautiful but, tell sentence. Me, Daniel, you don't believe teachers should be de-stressed? De I think oh, yeah. teachers should be very de-stressed. Very de and people often Parents as complain. well. Parents as well. Yeah. Parents as well. I mean I often get asked this question. Is it better to be a working mother or is it better to be a mother who's at home with the kids all the time? And the real answer is it's most important to be a happy mother. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what you do. You need to be happy. <laughs> I completely agree. If you are not going to be happy, it's going to reflect on the kid. There's you no know, point then, sacrificing your career, staying at home and blaming the poor kid for that. You know, the other thing we must talk about is, uh, and I received a tweet a little earlier when we said when I, when I tweeted that we we're going to talk about this, was caregiver stress, which is someone so, who's caring for somebody else at this point, uh, whether that person has a mental illness or otherwise, <coughs> the kind of stress that the caregiver goes through. And we're going to come back to that because uh, we have a couple of other phone calls coming in. Dr. Nirmala Srinivasan on the phone line from Bangalore. Bangalore. She's a great activist uh, working for patients of schizophrenia. Dr. Srinivasan, go ahead. Yeah, you, uh, you most happily brought me at the right uh, time when you <laughs> said caregiver stress. Okay. I've been working for caregivers yeah, yeah. for the for last long two time. decades. Harish, my old friend, is there yes, yes, giving yes. me a beaming smile. <laughs> I'm very happy to see you here. Happy so to meet you also. Okay, that's nice. Well, now, what I wanted to say, I, uh, I founded the first uh, self-help group in India in 92 when my son fell ill. He started it and it's still going on. But uh, now I have a national network of uh, families. Somebody wanted the contact in Bangalore. You can give my number. But okay. my only observation is it is a real shame that the workplace, especially the urban workplace, I'm talking about workplace, we pr probably mean the offices, the corporates and other things. We are not talking about unorganized labor sector. Probably there is more tolerance there than in the corporate sector. Yes. And he, I'm not biased against the corporate sector because this is what some of the users in our group, when I say users, they are the people under treatment. That's what most of them are techies and we have all of them participating in our meetings. This is what they say. What happens is because of the stigma, they forego many benefits like income tax rebate that they get. They are entitled for income tax rebate as disabled yes, yes, persons. Yes. They forego that. They forego meeting the psychiatrist. They don't get leave to go and meet the psychiatrist. They say they are carrying the work home and they'll do the work from home, but they are not able to do it because of illness. So all these problems, I think probably the the, the work the corporate sector should get modernized more to accept mental health in the workplace. I'm very happy this team has been chosen for this year. My all second. Right. Okay, Hi. okay. Uh, we, we, we'll, we'll put that information out. We also have Vivek Joshi who's on the phone line from Hyderabad. He's holding. Vivek, go ahead. Hello. Yes, Vivek, go ahead. Uh, Madam, uh, I've been suffering from depression in the last uh, uh, five years. Okay. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, Vivek. Uh, but now I have completely come out of the depression. But my purpose is that you have to take the tablets still in yeah. order to be active. Yes. But uh, uh, once I've tried my experiment by not taking the tablets for one or two days, and let's see what happens. And again, uh, uh, there was a change in my behavior. Mm. I mean to say, uh, uh, I got a headache or uh, I was not that much active. When I, when I missed the tablets. When you missed so the tablets. I went to the doctor and said that, yes, uh, what, no. So he you know, again I, I, uh, yes. said me to 
uh, take the tablets. Continue take the, the tablets, tablets again. Right. And, and uh, I've, I've had people get in touch with me saying that, uh, listen, I, I'm afraid I will go to a, uh, a counselor or a psychiatrist and they will prescribe antidepressants and I don't want to medicate the problem. Daniel, you wanted to say something? Yeah, same question. So I have a question for the experts. There's a lot of apprehension about medication. So uh, even my friends, when I speak to them, they're like, don't, if you, if you have a problem, don't take medicine, you know. Mm. Because you, you get hooked onto get the hooked tablets onto and then you and can't then you take, just get, can't off get out of it. So what are your yeah. thoughts on that? Yeah, so I have an observation to make here. Yes. People in our country are very happy to eat a fish which apparently has been loaded with something and swallow it without knowing <laughs> what it is and all kinds of uh, concoctions and I don't want to name anything. Uh, but they are very happy to take any of this without any bo if, if, uh, worry about what's going to happen to them in the short term or long term. But they are surprisingly very... Uh, they want to avoid something which is written down prescribed as a formula. I think the fault also lies with the prescribing doctors because we need to have enough time to explain this. And in my practice, I work with children. I have found a very good response from parents because if you explain to them, and I always tell them that don't worry, I'm not going to give you something that's going to harm your kid. Come back, I'm available next week. Let's talk about this. If you're worried, you may wait for a bit, but let's work it up. So parents and patients as well need this constant feedback. What? But there's a big appeal to patients that do not run away from something, at least if your doctor's prescribed it, but, he's but, signing you know, the a paper. But the concern is getting hooked he's and not being able it. to come yeah. off the medication. You, you want... I just want to know what's this fish and what's inside it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> completely <laughs> deviating from the question. Asthma for asthma. asthma, 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 asthma oh, yeah, got yeah. it, got it, got it. Which, which you think is completely <coughs> just focus yeah. on That's a crack. Yeah. In, yeah, okay. fact, in fact, about I the pills, I, I, I think the Dr. Sapna and me would, would be able to share. One thing is very important is that uh, like you take insulin to dissolve diabetes, sometimes in severe depression, medications can dissolve thoughts. I'll, I'll share a story. There was this young boy at the age of 18 who was very violent, very aggressive, a sports person. He went through counseling, but his, since his illness was very severe, he did not respond to a cognitive behavior therapy or counseling. And he required just one tablet of an antidepressant, Zoloft. He was doing extremely well till the time one day when he left my clinic with his father, he met his friends outside. This, this is a true story. And, and his friends asked him, Kon Pagale, uh, father or you? And he stopped the medicines. Mm. This boy committed suicide in three months' time. His father worked with us for a long time. Mr. Furtado, uh, helping uh, school, colleges, school students and college students to, uh, for prevention of suicide. Mr. Furtado also, also passed away recently. It is so important if the person is doing well, don't disturb his medications at all. Now, about hooked, being hooked for, with medications. Uh, when I say hooked, it would mean that uh, are you taking, if you stop the medication, you'll get worse. There are certain medications which have withdrawal symptoms and sometimes anti-anxiety medications when taken uh, without a prescription, you might get hooked. But mm. when you take an insulin or when you take uh, anti-hypertensive, you're not hooked. You, uh, it, it is required for you. Similarly, if somebody is taking a, a, a medicine for schizophrenia or for severe depression, it's important to understand that it's part of his food. In Marathi, we say very beautifully, bhaji, poli, and goli. So it's important to accept medication <laughs> as and when it's required. And, but the point is, in, in India, there's a lot of myth against psychiatric medications. And so it takes a long time at times to convince people who need it. Overdose of medications is wrong, but at the same time, overdose of counseling when not required is also wrong. You know, I'm going to ask this question here. Uh, uh, one second, and I'll take this question to Nija Birla. People are afraid of choosing, the, well, you say overdose. Now, there's no way of us knowing whether we're being given the right dose, the wrong dose, the overdose. It, it, it's all about is, choosing the right doctor and building yeah. a comfort level with the advice that, that you're taking. Nija Birla, how do we find mm. the right doctor? How do we know that we're with the right person and this person is not over-medicating or, you know, giving bad advice? That's true, actually. That is a, that is a real, uh, uh, you know, it's a problem that exists. The treatment gap is so huge in our country. The numbers are really few. And over and above, we don't, re we really, I mean, there are some really good doctors, but we really lack the very high caliber of doctors over here. So that really is a problem that we do face. Uh, even when we are looking for therapists, we find it very difficult to really come by really good quality ones. So yes, that is, that is really a huge problem that we do face. And uh, we as a country should really try and up the standard and up the level of psychiatrists and psychologists that we do produce.
I completely agree with her because 14 percent of Indians are mentally ill according to the latest Niman study which means 150 million Indians need uh, oh. help immediately and 20 percent one out of five people who are, uh, who are depressed in India are pregnant women so the numbers are so huge and she is perfectly correct in saying that we need we, we are still have we still have very few psych psychiatrists and very few few psychologists another in thing, the country yes another thing I know for a fact that therapy is quite expensive it's not uh, easily mm -hmm. affordable so how do we make uh, mental health care accessible, accessible to everyone yes. because a single session right now costs anywhere between two and a half thousand to even up to 5,000 depending on the caliber of the doctor. So, uh, and knowing the current economic, socioeconomic status of the country, not everyone can afford to go to a session like that. So how do we make it accessible to everyone? I suppose it will happen once we have more doctors. Uh, no, I think, I think, I think we need so to So I'd understand. like to say a point here. Can I? Yeah, of Please course. go ahead. So we, we at Empower also run a foundation actually where we offer the same psychiatric and psychological services but at a much subsidized rate because we do believe that I think mental health awareness and mental health help is something that should be accessible and should be available to everybody irrespective of the strata of society they come from and irrespective of the, uh, the income levels that they come from. So at the foundation we do offer subsidized rates for the counselling services, which answers your question actually, that how do we make it available to people who can't afford it? I think what can also help is one of the things yeah. we're considering is in our office is um, offering all the people who work with me uh, counselling. So when when you have a lot of people and then, then you know you can do stuff like that 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 can benefit. So because of the numbers, you're because able to the bring the cost down. Yes, we can talk to an organisation <clears> say, can you send someone once every two weeks to talk to the employees and. Right. 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 So if you can videos, find sponsor, yeah, that's more important to if, make people are happier. I feel like if you are if you are working at an organization that has a high stress, it's a high stress environment. Yes. Uh, Which most organizations are these days. Yeah. Yeah, you'd know you work in a news organization. <laughs> so, uh, the, I think what I'm trying to say is ask ask your organization, ask your management if they can do something, or if you know uh, that employees are really stressed at work, if you can ask them. I know that we're considering it for our own organization. I just want to come back to the point of kind of. Uh, being on the pills forever, yes. I think, uh, especially in children and uh, young people, we always make it a point to say that this is going to be, probably going to be till, because it's mental illness as such is a combination of various factors. So we always make it a point to say you have to have counseling as well as medication so that at some point when you learn to cope <coughs> about, uh, cope with your uh, if you have a kitty of coping strategies, distress tolerance strategies and things like that, you start coping with your depression, say, at one point. And at that time, we will look at taking you off your medication. So we always say that you have to be on your medication for, say, six months to a year. And after that, we will be looking at taking you off your medication, look as and when how you're doing at that point. So it's very important right at the beginning to sit with the parents and explain all this to them. It's also uh, important that we explain the side effects and things to the, ch uh, to the child as well as the parents. So I think some things are missing as in lots of times the parents don't even know what medication the child has been put on. Uh, and so there's a huge gap in the first session of medication prescribing to actually sit and explain all this to the parents to make mm. them more at ease right. with the fact that they are on medication. So I'd no. just like to add exactly to what she said. The first concept to make people understand is it is not about medication. It is about getting the person better. So whether you go to the right therapist or who's the right doctor, well, the person who gives you an outcome and who gives you relief doing the right stuff is the right doctor. There's a huge amount of quackery and Dr. Shetty flagged off that issue. I think there's more quackery related to mental health and uh, to this issue rather than even the physical health. There's a huge amount of quackery. You just write a board of whatever outside your house and you'll have children, patients walking in for kind of counselling. And that's very important for parents to find out, like Dr. Shetty said, what is the qualification, what is the training to find out from other so-called patients and more importantly, rate the person depending on whether that person writes something on a piece of paper. I think that's the single most and easiest way to know Look whether you can me. trust the doctor or the therapist. If somebody is giving you something writing, they're probably accepting you know, the responsibility for it. I, I would I, say I, so yes. many people who would just, you know, be counselling or doing therapy 
Oh, but there's not a scrap of paper they would write it down on. So that's one. You know, way. I, I want to, I want to bring in Danish uh, say it here because on television and on radio there is this horrid thing that happens late at night where complete quacks are handing <laughs> yeah, out yeah. advice. Love guru, love, love guru. gurus. Love gurus. That you see it. But people are calling in saying, you know, uh, so and so broke my heart and I'm depressed. And this person's handing out advice that he's obviously not qualified to do at all. The guys and this, need to sleep at that time. Not yeah, it's it's, it's shocking. And, and the fact that, that this is even allowed in our country, this should not be allowed. I mean, Absolutely. you well, should. No, yeah, Danish, we, we should take a stand at some point within the no, media. I think, saying I we're I not think I'll just break a myth right now. I think half. Yeah, see, I think half, if, like if you're talking about a show like Love Guru, for example. Very popular. I think half the calls that come there are from the internal sales team. Yeah. Yeah. Right <laughs> across the radio station. I'm sure you can tell me. Sometimes it's an easier problem. I myself have called into the night radio job and now. said, hi, uh, madam. <laughs> <laughs> but my heart broke. I want to come back. You want to stop these like, shows? I myself yeah, called into that uh, stuff like, uh, hi, madam. Uh, I'm feeling very sad. <laughs> that was me, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, like, I'm very I sad. Want to come and, back you know, to the show. Stop these shows. You have to know it. There is no legislation. There is no licensing required for you to practice as a therapist. There is no license required for you to be a counselor. You just put up a board outside your house tomorrow and there'll be a queue. Is you can speak well right. and you can handle yeah, it. But, but there must so the be some license. So actually, this is going to be useful. This is going to be useful. Can someone on the panel tell us what the qualification is to become a counselor? Dr. Shetty, what is the qualification? I, I, I think I'll first go, go back to what he said about See, affordable care. Through, affordable you know, care. I, I think we, we, we are not supposed, myself, India is not supposed to make I, the entire I, care sorry. bottom uh, Faye, I'd top like to heavy. Make a point here. Sorry, yeah. sorry. So top heavy. Uh, my teacher, Professor Enenwig, said mental health is too important uh, yeah, to be Faye, left I'd to like mental health professionals. I'd like to make a point here. You know the fact. And, and, and what is very important is to have alliance with a lot of yoga therapists uh, and other allied therapists because everybody does not need specialized therapy. Some people need only supportive counseling, reassurance and support. So we need to have a hierarchy of, of professionals for different needs and that is very important. We can't have a top heavy professional uh, Policy in India, which will become very expensive. Right. If, let if me let me bring in let me bring in let me bring in Neelcha Bidla because you know the point is at the end of the day deciding if I need a yoga therapist or yeah. deciding if I need a counselor, deciding or if I need a psychiatrist who's going to take or a comedy show. And who's going, going to take accountability? Show. Who's going to take accountability? Who's going to take accountability? Neelja Bidla. Parents always say no, that so you are the taking the child to like different to people. And there's no accountability. Neelja Bidla, please go ahead. Yeah, so you know the point I'd like to just start, I, I want to just go back to this, the thing that you were talking about, the love guru thing. I think the important thing what, you know, these kind of things and these kind of platforms actually point to us is that how important it is for us to listen to the other person. See, all mm -hmm. of us, I think, just want, we want that somebody should listen to us. You know, we want that, we want to be heard without any judgment and unconditionally. And that's why I think platforms like these are getting so popular because, mm. you know, we all, all of us at some point or the other suffer from loneliness. And I think the only cure is love and only cure is to have a listening ear. So I think the point is that, you know, if all of us can actually make the effort and listen to somebody, we can actually save a life. I don't think life. Love Guru has ever been and discussed And if all of us do that, I think that <laughs> itself will create a ripple effect and create... And, <laughs> Right. So, so, you know, what Teacher is saying is so, so important to have a listening ear. Actually yes. to listen to the other person. Listen to the other person. But, you know, Tarmay, I want to ask you this. There's something that, that young people do that's perhaps even more damaging, which is listen and then say, Chodna, tu kita drama kyu kar Chal, let's go watch a movie, let's go get a drink, you'll feel fine. <coughs> yeah, let's go get a drink, let's just go out, you just need to go for a walk. Are uh, yeah. depression kuch hota nahi hai. Huh. Uh, it's all in your head. It's all in your head. It's all in your head, all in your head yes. et cetera. So this is too much. Very, yeah. it's very common. But I think now we've had, we've had, you know, Shah Rukh Khan's slide and Karan Johar's slide. I think, I think now it's time to make mental illness a mainstream Yes. issue yes so automatically some of these popular myths are are debunked mm. you know uh, like I, I we made a video called if you treated mental health mental illness the same way as you treat physical Ill, uh, illness or this sorry the other way around and the number of people who wrote in saying that i have been guilty of doing the same and i think perfectly smart well that people can also be guilty of doing the same so i think whenever someone comes to you it's the first thing 
is stop, listen, and not say, not dismiss not, the not person's dismiss. feelings. So that, that's effectively like telling someone who has malaria, "Chhodna, it's all in your head. Yeah. Let's go watch a movie." Yeah, yeah it's all in it's your head and yeah. in your bloodstream right. and all over your body. <laughs> I think another thing we need to do is we need to make therapy cool. Yes, you know we need to make it a cool thing to do. So I think if enough role models, whether it's in your family or hey, look at the therapist on this on this yeah. panel right now, they're so cool. We need <laughs> a sequel to Dear Zindagi that's yeah. actually good. All right, that's what we need. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, you didn't think Dear Zindagi was good? I mean, truly. I'm friends with too many people <laughs> who are on the crew of that but film. But I think so. uh, it increased the co conversation about the need to go to a therapist. Yes, yeah. yes. That yes. that happened. And, and it, it made it sort of acceptable and cool. Mm. And, you know, Shankar it is cool. looked good. It's, there's, there's yeah, being, the problem is the movie raises the wrong expectations. You Everybody expect your therapist, your therapist to, to look, look like, like that. Shah <laughs> No, it is. It is extremely cool. I uh, like now. I think. Uh, I think what I do is I go to everyone and I say, go to a therapist. Right? Being yeah. self-aware is very cool. Understanding why you make the decisions yeah. that you make is very cool. Even yeah. if you think there's nothing yeah, wrong. Exactly. With you. Yeah, exactly. Just go for a. Ch just go. If, whether you're diagnosed or not, just go to a therapist. See how everything's going. You know, and that level of awareness will make sure I that agree. you are more sensitive towards yeah. yourself. You know, sometimes and others going to you. a therapist just also helps in. Go on, Nija. Sometimes going to a therapist just helps you give perspective on certain issues also. Absolutely. You know, even if it's a, you don't necessarily, if you have slight anxiety true, or true. you're su suffering sometimes from a low mood, you may not necessarily have the, the disorder. You may not necessarily have a generalized anxiety disorder or you may not, gen or you may not necessarily have depression as an illness. Yes. But going to a therapist will also help you just deal uh, with anxiety and a low mood on a day-to-day -day basis. Now and I need one hour on existentialism you tomorrow. from getting into <laughs> the illness phase. I completely agree but with you. We have, we have people who have been holding on the phone line and I'm going to get through these uh, phone calls back to back so we can speak to as many of them. Shalendra Kriplani on the phone line from Kota. Go ahead. Ma'am, I want to ask you that my son was a first year old, he was a first year old, he was a little weak and then he was a little bit older when he was 12-13 years old. So after that, he went to last year in the hostel, Pilani, Birla Public School Pilani. And for two months he was there, he was not, maybe he was not, Feeling well, उसके साथ थोड़ा अच्छा व्यवहार नहीं हुआ, फिर वो हम उसको वापस लाए और तब से वो थोड़ा डिप्रेशन में है, वो छोटी-छोटी बातों पे नाराज हो जाता है, पुरानी बातों को याद करता है, उसका थोड़ा खाने का डाइट, थोड़ा सोने का डाइट, थोड़ा अकेलापन रहना हमें लगता है कि he's a he's in a kind of depression. तो हम कोटा में गए भी डॉक्टर्स के पास हमें कोई अच्छे ऐसे डिप्रेशन के यहाँ पे या मतलब ट्रीटमेंट के लिए मिला नहीं अब मैं ये पूछना चाह रहा हूँ कि इस दिस कंडीशन रियली इज इनटू डिप्रेशन वो नाराज हो जाता है हर छोटी बात पे किसी भी चीज में ज्यादा खुश नहीं होता है थोड़ी थोड़ी देर में अपने आप परेशान होने के लिए चीजें ढूंढ लेता है थोड़ी देर खुश रहता है फिर थोड़ी देर परेशान हो जाता है काइंड ऑफ ही ट्राइज टू नॉर्मलाइज ऑल्सो बट समाइम्स ही अगेन कम्स बैक अच्छे बीच में कुछ दिन वहाँ गया था वहाँ के सुसाइड का अभ्यास करने के लिए और वहाँ बिल्कुल अच्छे साइकेट्रिस्ट है मैं नाम नहीं बताऊंगा पर वहाँ आपके फैमिली फ्रिशन के पास जाएंगे हम लोग आपको वापस मेरी टीम आपको वापस फोन करके आपको फोन नंबर दे देंगे कृष्णमूर्ति फ्रॉम विशाखापट्टनम कृष्णमूर्ति जी गो हेड यस यस गो हेड वी कैन हियर यू माई माई सनोइड यस and uh, he was uh, been counseled at uh, nim uh, nimhans in bangalore okay ah uh, uh, and uh, he was uh, actually he was using lot of uh, medicines we are not aware but now uh, we are why is using medicine we took him to nimhans then he is away from the sexual life with uh, my daughter and also another day he is keeping away from the wife and he has went to bangalore and the doing his job and the sending some money uh, monthly and mm -hmm. last two and a half years things are going on in this way 
Right. But he is a fatty man, he is a good, he, he will feel hungry, but he will not sleep till midnight, 12 to 1, and like that. Okay. But he is having also a habit of seeing this web and the blue film, but he never go to wife. Right. So, Dr. Sapna? I was just thinking about one thing that we don't talk about is the sexual side effects of medication and uh, whether we need to kind of uh, look into that as well about why he's specifically not going uh, towards his wife. It could be various other factors that can be happening like uh, especially if he's got paranoid psychosis whether it's part of his symptomatology that uh, if, he, if he's having some doubts and things like that against his wife whether that is part of his illness. So he does need to kind of uh, go to a psychiatrist and uh, right. get a proper history and evaluation done about why this is happening. Uh, so that would be my recommendation. All right. Uh, unfortunately, I have run out of time uh, again on this show, but I will make a commitment on this channel that we keep coming back to this and we'll keep talking about this as often as we can. Uh, if you want to continue to call on our uh, phone lines, which are at the bottom of your screen, my team will help you with phone numbers, uh, with helplines that you can get in touch with, or perhaps a database, uh, even put you in touch with Empower, which ne uh, Nirja Birla is running, which might help you find the right uh, counsellor if you need help. Remember, I, I, I think the most important thing we heard today is to just be open to listening, to listen to the people around us at home, to our children, to our spouse, to uh, the people in the office, people we're working with. And unfortunately, a group of people we did not get around to talking about, which is senior citizens, parents who are living by themselves, who perhaps we don't call enough. It's just so important today, while we have this much input coming in from social media and everything else that's going on, to simply stop and listen to each other, pay attention and not dismiss each other's emotions. We'll continue talking about this. I want to thank our panelists for uh, being amazing and brave and cool and coming out and talking about mental health today as we'll continue doing so on this channel. Thanks for watching.